a pitfall I want to mention in this case is the so-called SAM phenomenon. So in, in this case, we have a hypertrophied ventricle, especially the septum is hypertrophied. The rest looks rather normal. The ejection fraction also looks normal, even on the high normal side. And when you look at the mitral valve, you see that there is a movement, a motion of the anterior mitral valve leaflets towards the LVOT, which is beginning here. So here you already see an beginning of a five chamber view. And when you use the continuous wave Doppler here, you see this dagger shaped signal over here. So that's not an aortic valve signal, so not aortic stenosis, but an LVOT obstruction. So very high gradient, five meters per second is the maximum velocity of the signal. But this is distinctly different compared to the aortic valve and the aortic stenosis, of course. And this is a real pitfall because here you can see there is flow turbulence. So here denoting the flow turbulence and that there is a problem with the outflow, but the aortic valve seen over here and over here seems normal. So the problem is really this movement, this motion, this systolic anterior motion of the anterior mitral valve leaflet towards the interventricular septum, which creates this gradient. So this is a SAM in a hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. The peak gradient was 107 millimeters of mercury. Here we are talking about the peak gradient in case of an, a SAM phenomenon or a hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy because it's hemodynamically relevant or considered hemodynamically relevant when it exceeds 30 millimeters of mercury in rest and 50 millimeters of mercury during exercise. So this was a evaluation during rest. So the peak gradient of 107 millimeters of mercury is truly a high gradient. And there is another pitfall, a so-called pitfall in the pitfall. When you have this gradient, this LVOT signal, and you see it over here in the overall curve visualized here. So this signal would be around six meters, a peak gradient of above 122 millimeters of mercury. But there's a problem. This is not the LVOT signal because you see that there is the LVOT. There is flow turbulence and you see that the flow turbulence obstructs the LVOT. So the aortic valve seems at least from this view fine. We have another problem here. This systolic anterior motion of the mitral valves, of the anterior mitral valve leaflet, creates another pathology, a mitral regurgitation seen over here. So this is a patient with a hypertensive heart disease and this narrow LVOT and the thickening of the septum also leads to this SAM phenomenon. So this was not hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, but due to hypertension and the small ventricle, this gradient was created in a state of hypovolemia. But the problem is in this case, you have a mitral regurgitation, which is definitely relevant. You can see it here with Contrast with contrast, you see that the LVOT is truly obstructed. So, this is the anterior mitral valve leaflet, and here the posterior mitral valve leaflet. And you see the anterior mitral valve leaflet always moving towards the septum during systole. And you even see that here is a gap. So, this gap, because the posterior mitral valve leaflet is short and compared to the anterior, it cannot cover the rest of the opening. So, here you will find the mitral regurgitation as a complication of this LVOT gradient and the systolic anterior motion or movement of the anterior mitral valve leaflet. So here you can differentiate those two signals quite nicely again. So this is the mitral regurgitation signal. I want to go back once more because this, again, this is the mitral regurgitation signal. You can see it uh, over here. So this is a measurement of mitral regurgitation. And here you can see it again with the differentiation of the LVOT signal. The LVOT signal with three meters per second is still rather high, but it definitely does not exceed five or six meters as seen over here. So also very often when you have aortic stenosis or a gradient and the gradient exceeds six meters per second, then very often you probably measure the mitral regurgitation signal. So always keep that in mind as well. 